So in this next video, we are going to take a look at some of the techniques that are used to develop some more complex orthogonal drawings. So to start things off, let's take a look at these two views here. So what we want to do is work out what might go up here in what we discussed earlier is the plan view. So firstly, we need to know a little bit more about what we're dealing with. So to do that, we will first project up these lines here. So this tells us how wide our view up here or our object is. And secondly, using this width here, we can determine the height in this view, which so this corresponds to this W here, corresponds to this W here. And we know that our top view fits up in this box here. Now we also know from these two views that whatever shape is up here must touch these four lines here. So what might this top view actually be? It could be a square, which means we have a rectangular prism, which is probably what most of you would have put down. But there are several other options for us. We could also have had a circle giving us some sort of cylinder. We could have also considered possibly having a triangle. As you can see, we've still got all four edges are in contact. So that would have given us some sort of triangular prism. So we could also have this ellipse shape, which would result in something like this over here. But in fact, as long as we have a shape that touches all four edges of our box up here, it could be almost anything. So if we come back to this triangular shape, if we imagine it was, say, made of glass, then we would see this edge here down on this view here. So to do that, we can use a hidden line like this. Now, although we try not to use hidden lines in engineering drawings, in this case we might, or better yet, if you rotated this triangle around so the point was here, this hidden line would then become a solid line. We generally want to try and represent an object in its simplest forms. So that usually means with the least number of views required to show its shape. But sometimes two views might not be enough. But in this case, the best way to do it would be to use just these two views here instead of just these two views at the bottom here. So we are now going to take a look at a drawing where it's not in fact possible to complete it just one view at a time because we need some of the geometry features gradually from each of the views. So the object we're going to be taking a look at is this pyramid, a six-sided pyramid with a hole going through the middle. So our game plan here will be to start by drawing a basic pyramid and then add the hole in the separate views as needed. And we'll need a total of three different views to fully complete and represent this pyramid. So from the isometric diagram, we have all the dimensions we need. So we know that each side is of equal length L and the height is L. We do not require any dimensions on this hole here, which is equal to this hole here, because it touches each of these edges here of the uh, side of the pyramid and therefore is uniquely defined by the height L and this length L here. So our first step is to draw the top view or the plan view of our pyramid. So if we look straight down from the window above our pyramid, what we see is this hexagon here where we have this is length L here and this line here is also coming out at length L. So if you were to go about drawing this, the best method would probably be use a compass and draw out to, the, say, this point here and then just draw a circle using your compass and then connect each of the different points with diagonal lines. So now we look through our front window, uh, which is at 90 degrees from our top window. So we can transcribe the width of the hexagon here down onto our front view. So we pull these two lines point down from here. And then we also have this line here right in the center of our front view. 
So the resulting so the resulting image is this, the two triangles, which I hope you can all see. So next we want to look at the side view. So to start with, we can transpose our height from our front view across to our side view as it's going to be the same height. And then we need to take some of these points up here down. Really, you would uh, measure these and these arcs have just been put in place to identify now that they are actually the same distances. And we've only drawn half of the points because it is symmetrical and we can just reflect the other side here. So now we just need to add in our hole. So to start with, we will use the side view. Now we know the hole is at these three points here. So we can go ahead and just draw a straight circle on this view here. So now we get to the point where we can't complete one view without another. So we need to get the hole represented on this top view here. So our first step is we can take this height here and we know it's going to transpose straight across here onto our front view and we can represent that with a hidden line there. And secondly, we can take this width here and transpose that back up onto our top plan view here. We can then draw two lines straight vertically from our front view up onto our plan view. And then all that remains is that we know our circle, which in the plan view will be represented by an ellipse, will touch each of these edges here. So it will touch this blue edge here, this blue edge here. If we also had another one coming up for the other side of the circle along about here, it will touch there and it will touch the bottom here. So what we end up with is this, and right now we've just added in the hidden lines for extra clarity. So our last example here is going to be looking at oblique surfaces and auxiliary projections. So if we take the object that we have here and set up our windows like so, like we have before, and project off our views, we get the following two views of our object. And then we can open them up as we have done before and we get this drawing here. Now the question is, how do we know that this is a circle? We know from our original object that it is a circle, but without taking a couple of measurements off our drawing, there is no way to quickly look at that and know that it's a circle and what we've got protruding from this surface is a cylinder. So one possible solution is to simply tip our object and we can just add our windows again and simply project as we normally would. And as we can see from this view, it is quite easy to see that we have a circle or a cylinder on this face here. Then we can take our other view, bring that all across, unfold our drawing, and we end up with the following result. The only issue here is how do we know that these angles are at 90 degrees? When everything is in an XY plane, it's easy to make the assumption of right angles, but when they're rotated round a bit, it becomes a bit more challenging and we don't necessarily want to have to measure that angle just to be sure. So there must be a solution to this. So the solution to our problem is in fact a combination of the two situations we've just looked at. And the solution is called an auxiliary view, which is something we looked at right in the first videos when we were talking about isometric drawings. So we start with this view and this view, which are from our first situation. And then we add in our 90 degree line along here and we take another view, which is this view here. And to draw it, we can just project off our dimension from our side view here up onto our auxiliary view here. And to fully dimension it, we know that we have our width here is the same as our width here. So this is what we call an auxiliary projection, and it is the solution to the problem so that we can see that this circle here corresponds to a cylinder here. So we just have one final video for orthogonal drawings, and in this video we'll just take a look at some assumptions and ambiguities that may occur when considering orthogonal drawings.